Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print on demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, I want to show you guys how you can create this design right here. This is a back to school design for teachers. It's pretty fast and simple to make. Um, but I will go ahead and share what font I used and how you can go ahead and get that cool um, kind of lightning bolt in the middle. So if this is something that you're interested in learning about, please do stick around. Okay. So here we are on Canva's homepage. I am going to be designing for a t-shirt today. So I'm just going to go up to the right hand corner of the page and select custom size. Uh, I will be selecting 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. Now I do choose that size because if you design for Amazon merch, that is the recommended size um, for t-shirts and it will give you the most flexibility for other products as well. So I've had people ask that. Um, I also do like to optimize my designs for black because the darker color t-shirts do tend to sell the best. Um, so for most of my designs, I do optimize for black. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set the background color here to black. So there we go. Now today I'm going to be making a back to school design for teachers. Um, back to school usually happens somewhere mid late August. So now is the time that you should be getting those up if you haven't already. Um, and so there's lots of fun back to school niches that you can do ones for teachers, ones for students, ones for other school professionals, principals, you know, cafeteria workers, counselors, you know, anybody and everybody who goes to, you know, works at a school. Um, but this is a pretty, you know, funny one, simple, been around forever. We're going to put our own little spin on it. And this is going to be an a, B, C, D, you know, back to school, which, you know, you've, you've probably seen some of those ones before. It's a little bit of a play on ACDC. Um, I've also seen um, ADHD. Hey, look, there goes a squirrel. So there's lots of fun uh, variations on this, but that's what we're going to do. So I am going to start just by pulling up a text box by hitting T on my keyboard. And so for this one, we're going to be working in caps and I'm just going to go ahead and put a, B, I'm going to put a couple spaces and then C, D. And so that is going to be initially my main text, All right? And so there's going to be something like that. There's going to be the lightning bolt in the middle that you're probably used to seeing. I'm going to pull up another text box here. This one is going to say in caps again, uh, back, uh, back to class, Me back to class, back to school. It's really small. Let's make it bigger. Oops, one too many S's. Back to class. So something like that, right? Um, and so we're going to need some fonts. The font that I like to use that is the closest for this design is one that is called uh, Squealer Squeller. I did get it off of Creative Fabrica. Um, so let me go ahead and find this real quick and scroll down. By the way, these fonts are all fonts that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica and uploaded onto Canva to use in addition to the lots and lots and lots of, you know, Canva fonts that there are. You can always, of course, add your own. I do have a video on how to do this, by the way. So if you go to my channel, um, you can find a video that's called, hmm, I want to say download free fonts from Creative Fabrica to use on Canva, something like that. Um, there's plenty of free fonts. There's also some that you have to pay for, but there are hundreds of thousands of free fonts that you can get off of Creative Fabrica and upload onto Canva right here that you can use in addition to the Canva fonts. So sometimes you'll find some ones that are really cool. Um, so let's see, I'm down here in the S's. I should be in the right spot here soon. There it is. Yes, uh, Squealer Regular, right? So Squealer Regular, there it is. And I'm gonna use that on both of these actually. Um, and so you can look for that font on Creative Fabrica if you want to download it. Um, I did download this quite a long time ago, so I don't know if it's one that you have to pay for or not, but that is the one that I recommend, though you can use any font that you want as long as it's got a similar style to it. Um, I'm also looking to do maybe some of those little checkered marks that I've seen people do a lot of. That's easy enough. We'll go to the left-hand side of the page and we'll find a tab that says elements. 
And from there, if you just did a search for checkered, you will find all of these different checkered things. So we'll just go to graphics and I'm just going to pull up this first one that I see here. And I'm going to go ahead and just start with a nice white color so that I can see it. And I'm going to put the checkered stuff kind of like here. So you can kind of see the way that the layout here is going to work. And then I need my lightning bolt. Now you can use a generic lightning bolt here. So I'll show you what that would look like. And so you can see all the different lightning bolts. There's some cool checkered ones. So if you wanted to go with the checkered again, you could certainly do something like that and do the checkered lightning bolt again. You know, I'll play with the spacing in a minute, but that's one option there. You could always go with the more solid. You could do different colors. And so you can see all the different styles of lightning bolts that are available for you to use on a design like this. There's even some cool ones here where you've got, you know, some of the like leopard print with the pink. That looks kind of cool. So lots of fun styles that you can do that way. Um, I'm going to come back to this in one second. The lightning bolt that I'm going to show you how to use today is one that I found on Creative Fabrica, and it was specifically for teachers, which made it really good for this design. So I'm going to jump over to Creative Fabrica really quick. And all I did was a search for teachers. So it pulled up all of the graphics under teachers. There's a whole bunch, especially this time of year for back to school. And this is the one that I'm looking at right now. So what you can see is the lightning bolt, right? But they made it kind of look like a pencil. Now you can create the same basic effects, by the way, on Canva by just using a yellow lightning bolt and kind of overlapping a little bit of, you know, red for the eraser and black for the pencil. And I can show you how you could do that, just sort of overlapping and cropping. But I'm going to use this one. I like it. I think it's cool. So if I click on that right there, all you'd have to do is go ahead, click download. It will download it as a zip file. You will have to open that zip file and drag and drop it into your downloads. And then you can just jump right back over to Canva. And then you would go ahead, go over to your uploads and you will upload it. Okay, so here it is. Here's that same design that I would like to use. Um, and so I think that that looks, again, pretty cool. It's the one that I want, so I'm going to get rid of that. Now, I did say I would show you guys how you could do something very similar. So again, if I went back over to my elements and I picked a very similar shaped one, let's say this one here is very similar shaped and it allows me to change the color. So it's not an exact replica, but you get the idea. All I would have to do is make several versions of this. So I'm going to have my yellow version. I will hit control D that would duplicate it. And now that I've duplicated it, I'm going to make a pink version. I'm going to duplicate it again, and I'm going to go ahead and make a black version. And now what we would do is pretty much crop these. So if I was to double click, I can drag this down and sort of crop the top off, drag it up sort of, crop the bottom off and make just that little slit there. And so I can do that again here with the pink one. I can double click, drag it up and go ahead and do something like that. Now they're not perfectly lined up. So if I was to line the pink up, oops, and then line the black up, might need to use my arrows on there. There we go. You can see how I could create a similar effect. I could even go ahead, hit control D, bring it over a little bit to create a shadow, maybe make the shadow a tan color, send that all the way to the back by hitting control in my left bracket. And I've created something somewhat similar. Now I just did that really quick. Obviously, if I wanted to do it for real, I could take my time and, you know, do multiple layers and outlines and all of that, make it look pretty close to this. But since this is already available to me, I'm just going to go ahead and use the one that I just downloaded because that is easier. This one's already ready. So I can use this pretty simply. And so it would go somewhere in here, just like that. 
Now I do want the letters to be spaced a little bit closer together um, so that I can kind of make it a little closer to the pencil here. So to do that, I can just go ahead and go up to the top here. You've got this little arrow that points up and down. It says spacing if you hover over it. If you click on that, I can change that letter spacing. And so what I can do is I can go ahead and space it a little bit closer together. So something like that. And now you can see how those letters are you know, spaced a little bit closer together. And I can bring this down a little bit too. Or, I mean, I can, let's see how I want to do this depending on what size I want to make that. Something there. I'm just going to group these and kind of make that a little bit bigger as well. Something like that. And so now I can just sort of play a little bit with where I've got these things spaced. So maybe something like that looks pretty cool and then I bring my back to class up and I make sure that it is spaced pretty cool and so now you can already see the way that that design has come along now this is pretty similar to ones that I've already seen up there so we can take this and we can make a little bit of variations on it so it doesn't look identical to all of the others some of the things that I like doing is maybe adding a little bit more color to it so I've seen this kind of done with just the black and white style but let's go ahead and maybe say, hey, let's incorporate some of these colors here. So maybe let's make this checkered uh, area. Maybe let's make that the same yellow as the pencil. And then maybe let's go ahead and take this and maybe put an outline around it. So if we go to effects and we do an outline, I could go ahead and maybe make that outline that pink color off of the eraser. Something like that. Bring that outline down. I don't want it to be too thick or anything, but just enough that I get that tiny little pop of color there. And then the back to class, I might go ahead and make it that pink color. And maybe even put a little outline around there, go back to effects. And we'll just sort of do the opposite and make a white outline around that one. Bring it down so it's still nice and thin. And you can do something like that. So now what we've got is something that pops a little bit more. Now, the cool thing is if we're thinking about teachers and teachers that might wear something like this, not that there aren't male teachers that would wear this, but odds are the vast majority of teachers that would buy this design would be female. So if I'm just playing the st statistical odds of who would buy this shirt, it would most likely be a female teacher. And so with that in mind, you know, incorporating things like the pink works really well if you're, if you're targeting this towards the female teachers. Obviously, if you thought that a guy would be more likely to buy this, then maybe you wouldn't want to go with the pink. But I do like incorporating the colors of the pencil into the design. I think that gives it a little bit more dimension. If I really wanted to, you know, add even more, I could take this little checkered thing right here, hit control D, and I could add a shadow to the checkers too. So let's say I wanted to add the white shadow to the checkers. I can hit control in my left brackets and send it to the back. And now I've just got that little white outline around the checkers. And so, I mean, you can do it like that and you can play with this however you want. Um, if you use the up, down, left, right arrows on your keyboard, you can move anything one pixel at a time. Ooh, sale. Uh, right, left, up, or down. And so that's a great way to make little micro adjustments if you want to. Like, I want to make sure everything looks like it's good and centered there. Same thing here with my pencil. I might do something like that. In fact, I might even bring the pencil down a little bit. And so something like that looks pretty cool. Um, and of course, I can, you know, if I'm not sure, I can play with the colors on this. I can make several different versions. So once I have it kind of the way I like it, I can come up to the top where it says duplicate page. I can duplicate it. Now I've got another page to work on. And now let's say I wanted to play with the colors some more. Let's say maybe instead of making the checkers yellow, maybe I wanted to really make those checkers the pink color. Oops, I got the back checkers instead of the front checkers. Let me go back. Let's grab the front checkers. I know, sometimes it's tough to grab exactly what I want. There we go, there's that. Let's make the front checkers 
maybe that pink color and then maybe make my back to class that yellow color. Make sure I get the right yellow color. There you go. And so I can do that version. So now I've got some, you know, obviously different versions. Um, this one gives a little bit more contrast to the pencil. This one ties, you know, the actual fonts together better because they're mirroring colors. Whereas in this one, I've got different colors. So you can sort of play with it, see what you like the best. And of course you could always put up multiple versions as well. So there's nothing that would stop you from putting up many versions of the same design. And so this is just a really easy, um, you know, back to school niche that anybody can do pretty quickly when we're thinking about the back to school niches, because I did have a lot of people asking about that. And just remember there's tons and try to make them specific. So try to know your audience, whether you're doing it for teachers, you can do it specifically for grades too. You can do first grade teacher, second grade teacher, third grade teacher. You can do students. You can do, you know, ready to crush first grade. Hello, first grade. Welcome to first grade. I've seen one more recently that says brought we back. And it's kind of a response to the ones that sold not that long ago that says, brought we out teachers. Um, and so now we got brought we back teachers. And so those are all cool um, niches that you can do. Just remember, if you're going to do your back to school stuff, you want to get that up pretty quickly because back to school is in just over a month. Um, and then moving forward, we're going to be looking a lot more honestly into the fourth quarter. People are already starting to get some of those Halloween designs up. Apparently it is never too soon for Halloween. So I will be having some Halloween videos coming up here shortly as well. Um, if you have any questions, drop it in the comments section below. I do try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can and be sure to check out my channel. I've got over 250 videos, so there's a good chance that if you have a question, it's probably already answered. Also keep in mind that Canva has changed a lot over the past couple of years. So some of the older videos may be using older versions that where the editing software and everything looks a little bit different and that is why. But the earlier videos do start off very simple. If you go back all the way to video one, it goes over very just simple text designs. Video two was just simple like combining graphics and then combining text and graphics and so on and so forth and kind of working your way up to the more complex designs. So if you're really, really a beginner, go ahead and go to my channel and start all the way back in video one. Um, and like I said, if there's anything you wanna see, you can put that in the comment section below as well. And I will try to see if I can get um, your topic added to my list. I do read all the comments, by the way, so thank you for all of the kind words. I really do appreciate hearing that um, these videos have been helpful for you guys. I hope you guys are doing great on your sales. I hope you're being very creative, coming up with a lot of interesting designs and really growing your design skills and learning how to do some, some different things in the world of print on demand, not just with t-shirts, but with other products as well. Um, sorry about that rant. I hope you guys are doing good and I do hope to see you guys again next time. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.